This short film contains the single most powerful ideas and practical methods for improving tone production. The smallest investment of time in these simple exercises can actually bring you many years' worth of improvement right now. These exercises, which are equally effective whether played on violin, viola, cello or bass, or on Baroque instruments using gut strings, produce immediate and clear improvement whether you're an advanced player or a more elementary one. If you're already an advanced or professional player, they're the best warm-up exercises possible. And however good you are, they always still improve your tone production further. If you're a less advanced player, these methods will quickly move you towards a professional standard of tone production so quickly you'll be amazed. And they're so simple and easy to do. So long as you can basically draw the bow parallel to the bridge, you can do them perfectly. I've taught these routines, some of which I was shown by the great American teacher Dorothy DeLay, to students ranging from young children through to professionals. It doesn't make any difference what level the starting point is. The results are always the same. Within 10 minutes, they're making the best sound they ever made. And it also doesn't make any difference what standard the instrument is. Even when a soloist plays these exercises on a million-dollar instrument, the typical reaction after a few minutes is, wow, I've never heard my violin sound like that before. There are only five exercises to do, and you can make combinations out of them after that. Some of these have been used by the great players and teachers through the ages. One of them is for bow pressure. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's father, Leopold, was already teaching this exercise in 1756, the year of Wolfgang's birth. Since Leopold taught his son the violin, it's likely that Wolfgang himself practiced the pressure exercise at one time. Other great performers and teachers who have used the pressure exercise include Campagnoli, a famous Italian player, composer and teacher, who was born a few years before Mozart in 1751 and died in 1827, a few months after Beethoven. This is how the pressure exercise is represented in the Campagnoli Violin School from around 1800. Lucien Capet, the quartet player and teacher who was a renowned expert on all aspects of the bow in early 20th century Paris, taught this same pressure exercise to the Armenian-American teacher Ivan Galamian, and he taught it to Dorothy DeLay. Other instrumentalists have used the pressure exercise as well, for example, the great cellist Pablo Casals and the legendary Russian teacher Yuri Yankelevich. About the students I'll be working on in this film, a couple of the violinists were already studying with me when we made the film, but most of the students were chosen precisely because they weren't my students and had absolutely no prior knowledge of what we were going to do before they turned up to be filmed. I hadn't even met them before. Also, I wanted to include a mixture of advanced students and those who were in earlier stages of development so that typical problems could be illustrated. Because of the obvious time constraints, in most cases, it wasn't possible to address other issues of the right arm or bow hold, and instead we focused entirely on the specific exercises. These exercises are simply the best, and it's easy to say exactly why. First, nothing could be simpler. Second, nothing could be quicker to do. And third, nothing could produce faster results. They're like an endless well. However much water you draw up, there's always more you can take from it. Whatever your level of playing, you can return to these exercises again and again.